You know, today we have Brother Jalil Muta King, a veteran Black Panther, a member of the Black Liberation Army, to give us a talk to talk about how we lead and impact as Black Unionists. Thank you, Brother Jalil. Yeah. So, Brother Jalil is also an author and an activist, and one of his books, We Are Our Own Liberators, Selective Prison Writings and Escaping the Prism, Fade to Black Poetry Essays. Now, thinking about that, as you heard Brother Malcolm said, there's going to come a time when black people come together, there's going to be a reckoning. So, that seems like that situation has come. And when I think about what has gone on this week, we're talking about the de uh, black diaspora and coming together economically. The question I have for you, yeah. Brother Winter King, is as black unionists, how do we become our own liberators and foster unity among black people? Great, thank you for the question. First of all, I want to thank uh, the team, uh, the National Black uh, uh, Congress, uh, caucus, uh, for this invitation. I, I actually, I was actually surprised to learn that I was invited to such an extended event. I think it's very important that we come to understand that in regards to our struggle, in regards to black people in the United States, we've always been at war, mm -hmm. right? The war been perpetrated on us since 1619, mm -hmm. and we've been in resistance ever since, right? Everything from Armistad, if y'all remember the movie Armistad, right? right? To today's conditions of mass incarceration that we're confronting today. Right? These policies that we have confronted in the United States is actually war. Right? Uh, Acts of war against to, to suppress and to deny our human existence, our human value, our, our humanity, as we might say. Okay? And so for us, it's important for me to understand that in terms of the union, mm -hmm. right? That it's not just as so much as the union, it's the issues of black people. Mm -hmm. Right? It's a question of black people. A union is an organization that, that is, is, I guess you would say, a, a department of who we are as a people in this country. And your capacity to organize or organize yourselves for the improvement and betterment of our community, right, as teamsters. But it's more than that, right? It has to be more than that because we have to recognize that you all represent just a small segment of who we are. Now this does not mean that in terms of that small segment it has to remain small, right? We can grow, we can evolve, we can build, but we have to be on the same page in order to do so. And what is that page? Unfortunately, unfortunately, for many of us, we don't understand the degree from which we have been traumatized, right, and have been divided, right? We've lived in a system of 400 years of white supremacy, over 400 years of white supremacy. And you cannot tell me, cannot tell me that none of us have been traumatized and lived in a system of 400 years of white supremacy. That's impossible. And have you guys, have you guys the time to and understand the degree of that trauma. Come on. Huh? That's just why we divide the way we are mm. as a people. Because of the, the, the degree of trauma. Mm. And also because of the kind of leadership that we've had over the years. We always know that there's been a division in our leadership, right? Uh, we can give two prime examples uh, uh, that we can really recognize is Martin and Malcolm. Right? What was the integration? And the other one for separation. separation. All right? But when I say separation, I want to understand that. We, I'm going to put some context to the issue of separation. Please, please. Right? When we talk about separating, we're talking about building a nation. That's right. Yeah. Nationhood. Right? Now, we understand that there are sovereign nations in the United States. Do we know how to understand that? Yes. Huh? Mm -hmm. Are there sovereign nations in the United States? Yeah. Right? Native Americans have sovereign nations in the United States? Yeah. My great grandma is Creek mm. from Alabama. Muskogee Creek, right? A great grandfather is Jamaican. He came from Jamaica, right? He was a rebel. He was, as my grandma told me, he was a maroon. Mm -hmm. All right. Explain, explain that, because some people might not understand about maroonage. Okay. It's because if, if you, last week, when all the things were going on about Montgomery, I would hear a lot of young people say to me that, you know, we're not going to be like our ancestors during the civil rights. I said, young brother, you got it wrong. We have resisted from the time we were stolen from Africa. Well, Maroons were those who were fought back, and particularly Jamaica, fought back against the British, 
had Colon the colonizers. You remember in Wakanda? Mm -hmm. you remember uh, Black, uh, Black Panther? They made a uh, you know movie behind the Black Panther. Right? And when the white man came into that to that laboratory, what did she say? Colonizers. Right? Yeah. Alright, we've been colonized. We've been colonized. And those who have fought against the colonizers and removed themselves from their domination, from their authority. Those are the rules. Mm. Right? Here in this country, what is actually real name is called Turtle Island, right? It's not America, it's Turtle Island, not the indigenous, right? We also had Maroons who joined with the Seminoles. In this country, in this, in this uh, 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 state, state of Florida, they're Maroons. And so my grandfather was a Maroon. And he left, uh, he left Jamaica, came to the United States, and as my, I mean, let me just briefly just give a little story, right? I've been, I've, I've, I've been 49 years inside a prison, wow. right, inside the United States penal system, right? The penal system in and of itself is a slave system. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Um, you need to understand that, right? Based on the 13th Amendment of the United States Constitution, that mm -hmm. says slavery and involuntary, I'm paraphrasing, slavery and involuntary service should not exist in the United States or jurisdiction except yes, yeah. for those who have been duly convicted of a crime. Mm -hmm. Now the problem with that in terms of the issue of duty and also the exception clause. Mm. Right, because we know that we're not we're not judged according uh, according to the law and uh, by our own peers. Mm -hmm. So the question now, how we're being judged, is that we actually do it? Right. Second of all, is the exception clause. Right. The exception clause informs us that slavery in the United States has never been abolished. Yep. Right. We have a penal system that is actually a slave system. Yes, yes. Right. Where they are reaping exorbitant profits from the labor of our people, both more black and brown individuals. Right. Inside these institutions. Of these slave camps, right? Exorbitant profits from free labor. Free, hey, now I'm speaking to the labor movement now. We're going to talk about the free labor. Right? right? How come y'all not fight against the 13th Amendment of the United States Constitution to allow some penal slavery in the United States? How come we're not, as an organization, right? Teamsters, right? Building a campaign to end the 13th Amendment. Now, I, I'll let you know. There is a campaign. There is a campaign called 13 Forward. Google it. Right? Yeah, 13 Forward. I'm organizing 13 Forward in, in my uh, city of Rochester, New York. Right? And we're building the foundation for which we end penal slavery and ensure that uh, we don't want to go too far off. <laughs> now you're going to go so many different places. Okay. But 13 Forward is ultimately a goal and objective. It's to change the mentality of the judicial uh, system of mass incarceration. Mass incarceration, yes. There's a such thing as mass incarceration. They want to continue to ensure that there's a capacity for which they can reap these over the profits from our black behinds. Yes. I'm going to take that away. I'm going to say our labor. All right? You with family. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. <laughs> All right? We are family. All right? Because when they look at us, they don't look at me as a Muslim. They look at you as Christian, right? They look at us as black. That's it. All right? And we have, to, we have to understand that in terms of, of all the divisions that we have to overcome. All right? So 13 Forward is, is a campaign to end penal slavery. And when we end penal slavery, we change the mentality of those on the inside. So now they get up in the morning, right? So we're going to demand to have minimum, at, at least minimum wage for their labor. Right? So they get up in the morning, they go to work, they value. Okay. They get compensated for their labor. What's gonna happen when they come home? They'll get a job. Yeah. They've been trained. Mm -hmm. Five years, ten years, twenty years. I did for like I said, 49 years. Uh -huh. But I was always, you know, I was the other side of it. That's the I was fighting that. <laughs> you know. Uh, so they come home, they get a job. They start taking care of their babies. Right? Take care of their families. That's what they didn't want them inside. So we change the mentality from a prisoner to an incarcerated worker. Mm. He's an incarcerated worker now, right? And this is part of the process we go towards uh, the, the struggle of abolishing the entire system, right? Tactical issues, tactical mythology, in which we begin how we fight back, right, in, on the system, right? So it's important for me to share with you the necessity for the teachers, for the unions, mm -hmm. and you ask the question, right? What can we do to become our own liberators? Right? One part of that aspect is enjoying the struggle to end penal slavery in this country right? as unions. 
and we gave, and, and as, as part of that process, besides these, these penal slavery institutions, we began to cultivate individuals and to train individuals so that when they come out, they have a job for them, come right into the union. Mm. We grow, we build. You understand know what I'm saying? You have to be tactical, you have to be tactical, and our strategic goal. Now, what is the strategic goal? Mm. Right? I'm going back to Martin and Malcolm. There you go. Strategic goal. Go. Right? I like that. I like that. Martin, strategic goal was integration, and unfortunately, the word that I don't like using, but unfortunately, many of us have done so assimilation. We've assimilated. Yes, sir. Assimilate into a system that hates us. Yes. We, many of us believe in let's get along, let's go along to get along. Oh, wait, I, I want to push you a little bit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so, growing up, I felt that I had to choose between Brother Malcolm and Brother Martin. Yes. But then my father said to me, who was a historian, have you read their speeches? And two of the speeches that he gave to me was I've made it to the mountaintop in the Ballad of the Bullet. Mm. Okay. And when you read those two speeches, you know, when you get beyond the mainstream, you will see how similar mm -hmm. Malcolm and Martin are. Because at, by the time Dr. King was being assassinated in chaos and community, where do we go from here? Mm -hmm. That is not the King that is put out on TV. Like, right. like Justin reminded us this past week. Next week is the 60th anniversary of the March on Washington. Sure. And people talk about the dream. The dream's not tangible. They don't talk about the first 22 minutes about the insufficient check mm -hmm. that he was coming to get. Thank you. They, they don't talk about that. Thank you. So how, how mainstream media and how mainstream history tries to divide us as a people. Mm -hmm. yeah. So how, as an organization, do we combat the divide and conquer? Because no, we have to leave here united to go out and do this work. So how as an organization do, do we fight against divide and conquer and move as a unit and as individuals to like you see, build and uplift our community? Okay, great, good question. Real good question. I want to answer that question this way. Right? As many of you know, Malcolm criticized the March on Washington, mm -hmm. right? Uh, they had what they called the Big Six, right? Who organized the March of Washington, and they called them in to Washington, D.C. to discuss this march. And what happened to them? But none of the march from Washington was for, one, was for, for jobs. Jobs and freedom. Jobs and freedom, right? And it came out to become a dream. Mm -hmm. Right? It ended up becoming a dream. And what did, Mark, what did Malcolm say about that? Right? It was black originally, it was strong originally. And then what did they do? They lighten it up. Mm. They put some coffee. They put some cream in that coffee. Mm. Right? And it changed the whole dynamics of what the march of Washington was. Mm -hmm. It's about black freedom. So let's understand something in regards to that issue. It is important that we stand on the principles for which we are moving towards and not allow those, the colonialists, right, the colonizers, mm -hmm. to integrate our movement or influence our movement or water down our movement, right? And it goes back to the idea of what is our goals and objectives, right? Not only tactically, but strategically, mm -hmm. right? I may mention the issues of sovereignty, right? I also identify myself as a new African. What does that mean? That means that I identify myself and I have not been identified by my colonizers. Mm. We've been named everything except the children of God. Okay. That's right. Huh? Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. What, what's a Negro? Yeah, right. 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 What's a coon? What's, yeah. what's the N-word? Yeah. Yeah. Right? Right. What's an American? Yeah. Some of us are, you know, we, we are in, uh, in a state of mentality, state of mind, where we call ourselves African American. But America has never been a supporter of Africa. Mm. If you know what's going on in Africa today, mm -hmm. with the Afrocon, with Afrocon and Niger, Right? They're trying to recolonize Africa. America has never been supportive of Africa. Except for export its resources, its labor and its resources. And yet we identify ourselves as American or African American. So we got a split personality here. Shout out to that point. Let me just finish this. I, 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 
appreciate you, Professor. Not, you know, I want to get this respectful. You're speaking the truth, brother. Go ahead. But it's important for us to recognize who we are as African people. Mm -hmm. All right? And I'll just give you a short story, a, a, a very short story now. My mom uh, was a student of African dance as a young woman. And she used to teach my daughter, my sister and I, African dance. And her teacher used to tell her, say, you're African. So that's what she taught us as a child, mm. right? We are African, right? We are descendants of Africans, right? We're not a Negro, we're not a coon, we're not an N-word, we're not any of the derogatory names that have been uh, imposed upon us, right? And we're African, Amen. right? And that's how I was raised in my household. So my, my vision, my world vision, was that I'm an African, and everything outside of that, in, as far as I'm concerned, was in my position. To my very existence, my identity of myself, mm. right? And so I was raised in that in that that era, that era of the '60s and '70s movement, with the idea '50s, '60s, and '70s movement, with the idea that I'm an African, and opposing a system that opposes my very existence, my identity of who I who I am as as a person, as a human being, mm. all right? And so for us, it's important now to have evolved where I need to be. I do find myself as a new African, because there's a movement to build what we call the Republic of New Africa. Right? I talk about sovereignty. How come we're not sovereign? How come? Because we have not raised our consciousness to the degree that we understand ourselves as a nation, within a nation, an oppressed nation within a nation. We're not there yet. That's where we need to go. All right? We. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, listen to me. We've been colonized by the British, by the Portuguese, by the Spanish, by the Dutch. All right? We speak all those languages. All right? And our diaspora. We speak all those languages. Who says we don't have the obligation or the right to speak in regards to what is going on in our country or in this country and around the world? From my voice. We have a voice to land around the world. Our greatest organizer is Marcus Garvey. Mm. Right, you know that, huh, bro? Appreciate that, man. Marcus Garvey. He organizes in Africa, the Caribbean, here in the United States, and Britain. That's why that knucklehead, uh, J. Edward Hoover, mm. right, at the time he was an agent, if you don't know this history, he was an agent, he the one that was investigating and creating conditions for markets to be sent out and exported out of the country, yeah. right? Yeah. Jay Hoover. then he became the, the, uh, uh, the director of the FBI, right? And he created a condition, uh, a, 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 a program called Cointel Pro. And part of that policy of Cointel Pro was to prevent the rise of a black Messiah. Yeah. Where did Jay Hoover get that from? From his experience on Marcus Garvey. Mm -hmm. All right, we have to return to that reality, to that root. Right? Amilcar Cabral wrote a book called uh, uh, Return to the Source. Right? Amilcar Cabral, he was the African leader of uh, uh, Guinea Bissau. Right? And he fought the war and won the revolution in Guinea Bissau. Right? We have to return back to the source, yo. Right? And so for me, in, in explaining uh, the, the conditions of the art, the division between Martin and Malcolm, Malcolm understood that integration did not serve our best purpose as a people, right? How do you integrate into a system that don't want you in the first place, right? And, and unfortunately for many who have integrated, they have also become assimilated, right? And that's our division. So we have both two things. We have a class struggle and we have a national liberation struggle. And I say national liberation. National liberation struggle is this here. The majority of black people, the majority of African people in the United States, in Turtle Island, live in five states. Right? South Carolina, Georgia, Mississippi, Louisiana, and Alabama. Called the Black Belt South. Yeah. Why is it the Black Belt South? Good question. Right? Who the majority of us live at? That's right. That's right. Right? <coughs> and at one point in time, we was building our own sovereignty. After the Emancipation Proclamation, right? 
Uh, and field order number 15, a general Tukumsei Sherman, right? That informed that those who were emancipated would have from St. John South to the Florida Basin to establish their homeland. Africans. Right? Establish their homelands. And we began to organize ourselves in that capacity, what we call freedmen bureaus. This is the governing organizing of a new nation at that time. Right? Then came what? The Hayes Tilden Compromise. Right? Brother, brother, what the Brooke McKenna, Brother Hayes won the, uh, the electoral votes, right? Uh, Tillman, Samuel Tillman won the popular vote. Samuel Tillman was Confederate. So they had a compromise. They said, okay, Hayes, you take the presidency, right? But you have to remove the uh, Yankee uh, 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 soldiers from the territory that were becoming our nation, a new nation. Right? Hayes agreed to that. They removed the Yankee soldiers, and what happened? 100 years of lynching followed. Mm -hmm. yeah. Terror. Right, when the Confederate became the Ku Klux Klan, right? And we started our first major migration out of, the, out of the South into the North and the West. Destroyed the, the foundation, the basic principles and foundation of nationhood. Well, keep this also in mind. 14th Amendment of the United States Constitution. We're talking about 13th, 14th Amendment of the United States Constitution, right? Due process. There's also nationalization. How do we become citizens? Are we citizens? Well, that's another question. But how do we become citizens? Right? 14th Amendment of the United States Constitution. They impose that upon us. Say that we become citizens. 14th Amendment. We never had what we call a plebiscite vote to determine where we want to be as a people. Right? Do we want to return back to Africa? Do we want to establish our own homeland? Do we want to become citizens of this country? Plus that vote. It was never afforded us. So this idea of citizenship was imposed upon us. Imposed. And we accepted it. Or at least I tried to. Right? To the extent that permitted, they permit us. Remember, we're still under colonial uh, persuasion, colonial uh, authority. All right, and so let me let me just uh, uh, share a couple of passages from uh, my book. Now we all liberators. If we don't liberate ourselves, nobody else will. Is that right? That's right. right. Okay. You notice uh, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, Article Fifteen, states everyone has a right to a nationality. Do we agree to that? Okay. Two. No one shall be arbitrarily deprived of his nationality or her nationality or their nationality, nor denied the right to change the nationality. Mm. Nor denied the right to change the nationality. All right? 1968, there was a convention in Detroit at the Reverend Franklin's church. Who's Reverend Franklin? Y'all know Aretha, right? Yeah. Uh, okay. That's right. That's right. That's right. At her daddy's church, her daddy was a Garveyite, mm -hmm. right? And as a result of this, 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 uh, this convention, 500 people came together and they decided at this convention that they were going to create what was supposed to be the provisional government of New Africa. Provisional government of New Africa. They raided the place. Right? They raided the place. Shut up. Uh, 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 Reverend Franklin's church. Wow. When I say they, you know who I'm talking about, right? Yeah. I don't have to be I don't have to emphasize that they, but what? Okay. But I'm saying we're at war. It's always been that way. When we decide to become independent, when we decide to do to to determine our own destiny, right? To become emancipators, to emancipate ourselves from a colonial government, to become abolitionists to abolish anything and everything that dehumanizes, degrades, and demeans the value of black people. Abolish it. It does not have to exist. It only exists because we permit it to exist. Right? So we all have to become abolitionists. What we're talking about? So, 
to, to your point, <laughs> you talk about I told you I didn't know. I didn't know. So, so to your point, in terms of liberation yeah. and us moving forward, mm. how do we decolonize our mind? Yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah. How do we, and, and then, but also, I want you to go into the difference between emancipation yes. and liberation. Yes. Because there's two different things. You emancipate mm. property. Mm. That's not liberation. Mm. Say that. Say that. Okay. Okay. So, share, share that with you. So, so when, <coughs> because they thought of us as their property, mm. that's why we were emancipated. They gave us permission. Not that we weren't fighting for our own liberty. So, liberation. So, I don't want to be emancipated. I want to be liberated. You know what you just said? We want to be liberated. But liberated from what? What were we liberated from? Huh? What were we liberated from? And not only liberated from what? We're liberated to what? Where are we going? As a people. Alright? Let's let's let let me um I'm gonna go further on in, in this, this discussion because there's a lot more that needs to be, be shared in terms of what's going on on the ground, right? That many of us who are so caught up in our daily lives, right, that we have not been in touch with. Right. Okay. Uh, December 17th, 1951, about two months after I was born. I'm 71 years old, I'll be 72 in, the, in October. Right. Genocide against the United States. Mm. We charge genocide. Look it up. You can find the book. All right. The FBI, J. Edgar Hoover, prevented Paul Robeson from going to Geneva to present, to present the petition. They didn't want uh, uh, William Patterson to be turned back to the United States. All right for that. All right. If you hear the uh, 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 Malcolm X, El Hass Malik Shabazz, and his uh, <laughs> message to the grassroots. Mm -hmm. He talks about genocide. He's listening to Martin Luther King in his speech, uh, The Other America, right? right? Mm -hmm. He talks about genocide. But what do we do? We decided, 2021, we called the international jurors to the United States, right? International jurors to the United States, and we held an international tribunal. You can look it up. International tribunal at the El Haas Malik Ong, Malcolm X, Betty Shabazz uh, Education and Culture Center in Harlem. That's the area, that's the t place where uh, 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 Malcolm was murdered, the other bomb. It turns into what it says here now. Appropriate place to have the international jury. Right? Three days testimony, 30 testimonies, 30 witnesses testified, right? Gobs of, of, of books, I mean, uh, uh, documentations that they reviewed. Right? And on October 25th, 2021, nine international jurors, esteemed judges of international law, determined that the United States is guilty of genocides and its black, brown, indigenous people. There's a white out on it. Mm -hmm. I don't say black out. <laughs> right? you, you know, and you, you type in, you used to type in on computers, and you just had the white out. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to see that word no more? You want to change it? There's a white out on this. The United States has been found guilty by and esteemed by the international jurors of genocide against black, brown, indigenous people. You know the impact that is? Mm. I was in Greece last year. Right? Last year I was in Greece for an international symposium on political prisoners. Right? You know what I told them? That you will not be free until black people are free. Mm. I was in Venezuela this year, all right? 
And there's a, there's a brother here, Alex Saab, I don't want to get too much into his case. Alex Saab, he was a diplomat in Venezuela, the United States kidnapped him. He's in the MCC here in Florida today. All right? they, have had, they invited me over there to discuss the issue with him. All right? And I told them the same thing. You will not be free to black people are free. Why is that? But let's talk about genocide. All right? The 1948 Convention of Genocide states this here, right? <clears throat> the present Convention of Genocide means any of the following acts committed with the intent to destroy in whole or in part a national, ethnic, racial, or religious group, such as one, killing members of the group. Did they be killing us? Oh, yeah. yeah. Huh? Every day. Every day. Some we hear about, majority we do not. Oh, hmm. yeah. Let's go, right? Causing serious body and mental harm to the members of the group. Mm -hmm. Are we suffering mental harm? Yes. Have you been traumatized? Yes. By ra racism? Yes. Huh? White supremacy? Yes. Huh? Deliberately inflicted on the group condition calculated to bring about its physical destruction in whole or in part. In the last 50 years, our population has not grown between 11 and 13%. People have grown. Every ethnic group in this country has grown. It's of us. You think? It's <laughs> for us. Why are we not growing? It's genocide. Let's go. And policy measures intended to prevent the births within the group. Sterilization of our women without their consent. There's a case going on in Chachala uh, prison in California right now where the sisters are are fighting against the system because they've been sterilized mm -hmm. without their consent. Right, 20 years or 30 years ago, the Puerto Ricans had a big, big, big uh, 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 campaign against the sterilization of their women in Puerto Rico. We know what they did with Native Americans, indigenous people in this community, uh, in, in this country. Sterilization, it is an issue that continues today. Let's go. For, uh, uh, forcibly transferring children of a group to another group. Mm. To another group. We know what they did with the, with the indigenous community. Taking their children, cut off their hair, giving them to mercenaries, I mean missionaries, mercenaries, to missionaries. <laughs> to missionaries, cutting off their hair, changing their name, changing their language. What is it? That's us, brother. You know what I'm saying? All right. The foster care system today, majority of children in foster care system today, who are they? Black and brown. And what it tells us? They destroy families. Destroy families. They have that kind of uh, numbers in the foster care system. And we're silent. Why? Because we're assimilated into a system of integration. Come on now. All right. Article 3 is further states that the father shall be punishable. Genocide is punishable. Conspiracy to commit genocide is punishable. Direct or public incitement to commit genocide is punishable. Attempt to commit genocide is punishable. Complicity in genocide is punishable. And so the international jurors on October 25th, 19, uh, 2021, has found the United States guilty of the charge of genocide against black, brown, and indigenous people on five counts, one of the five counts. That we brought. Now remember, I was <clears throat> I was inside prison uh, when we first began to organize the uh, the genocide uh, uh, tribunal. Right? Uh, I, I don't have time to go through all my history and things that I've done inside prisons, but initiating this campaign to have the international jurors come back in the second time they came to the United States. Right? While I was in lock up, I was in. Uh, um, Segregation. They put me in segregation because I was teaching a proof program in out of the correction facility, mm. teaching black history. All right? I started in 1861, followed all the way up to 1966. All right? Started talking about the Black Panther Party. You know what they did? Shut it down. Shut it down. Mm -hmm. Shut it down. Put me in isolation. Wow. All right? Now I'm teaching the guys that have in my class are JDs, right? Bloods, Crips, and so right. Able to stay in that mentality. 
He didn't want us to teach them the history of resistance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they locked me down for four months, right? Destroyed the program, approved program. And at that time, I had to call my comrades inside, uh, outside and say, listen, it's time to bring the international jurors back. And so we brought them back and had the international tribunal. Right? And then decided that we could bring these charges of genocide. What are the five charges? Mass incarceration. Mm -hmm. Right? We know they exist. We know they target our community. Mm -hmm. Mass incarceration. Second one is, is, is uh, um, um, resisting political prisoners. There are political prisons in the United States. The United States don't want to give recognition to them. Why? To give recognition to political prisons is to give recognition of resistance to white supremacy to capitalist imperialism. They don't want to do that. They don't want the world to know that there is resistance. In, they they, they, they uh, uh, falsely, hypocritically tell the world there's nothing going on in the United States. Right? That this is the, 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 the country of peaches and cream and, 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 and streets made of gold and, and, and yeah. All right? Ethnic uh, um, 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 health inequities. Another chart. Health inequities. Why is it that white people live twice as long as black people in this country? That's a fact. Twice as long. Okay? Because they get the proper health care that's neglected to us. Yeah. All right? Twice as long they live. Okay. Environmental racism. Mm. Another charge. Environmental racism. We know what happened to Flint. Mm. Right? In other places. <laughs> we know what happened in Katrina. Mm -hmm. yes, right? But we know, we know what redlining is, right? Yes, so why is our community held in, in areas where it's most polluted? Why do we have the highest level of asthma, mm -hmm. highest level of heart disease, liver disease, right? diabetes? You think this is you think this is a happenstance? This is by chance? No, it's systemic. It's systemic. It's deliberate. Right? Again, we are assimilated. Right? We turn a blind eye. We rather go along and get along, but we fight back. Okay. Uh, um, Health inequities, environmental racism, mass incarceration, resistance of political prisoners, and most importantly, state-sponsored killing mm. of black people. Mm -hmm. Right? State-sponsored killing. Police killing black people. Let's put it, let's put it. Boldly. Right? Factually. Now, this, now let me make, make this point. I understand that, that the Teamsters also have uh, a law enforcement as part of the union, mm -hmm. okay? And I understand that, and I understand the necessity for them. As we live in this, this social order, the purpose of law enforcement. How many of you know the history of law enforcement? Yes. Slave, 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 slave catchers. Yes. Right? Let's talk about it. No, we have to talk about it, sis. Right? The slave captives, right? And how do they function today in our social order? Yes, I, I, I. <laughs> Control and contain black people in their communities. Yes. As they keep them on the plantation. Yes. Yes. Huh? That's their history. That's their legacy. Right? Now again, you know, I'm not opposed to law enforcement. I'm opposed to white racism, white supremacy. Mm -hmm. Right? I think there's a necessity to have security in our community. Why don't we organize our own self, our, our own patrol system? I think we're going to our own enforcement. All right? How do we do that? We build communities of elders. So that we bring our issues to our community of elders. We have to change the culture and our thinking of who we are as a people. Yes. All right? We have to build our own our compassionate kind of culture in our community. So we build the community of, of elders. We establish our own, the Black Panther Party establishes the own uh, 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 patrol systems. Right? In our communities. That's the reason why they, Ronald Reagan, who was the governor of, of uh, California at the time, because California was an open state, mm -hmm. open carry state. That's the only way you got control. Right. Yes. Open carry state. 
But when black people arm themselves and start reading the law, they change it. Just now. Wait a minute. What's that about? They want us to have the capacity to defend ourselves against our own oppression. All right, so here we are today, uh, 2023, and we have successfully got a verdict with Paul Robeson, WD Du Bois, and William Patterson was unable to do, we achieved. We got a verdict from the internet, and esteemed by the international jurors to determine that the United States has been engaged in genocide against black, brown, and indigenous people. So now what does that mean? What do we do? We have to remove ourselves from harm, from continued harm. We have to, divide, we have to separate ourselves as our house from Nick Shabazz, Malcolm X said, divorce ourselves from a system that has been harming us, has been killing us. Let's do that. So, and so we're in the process of building what we call the people center. We're gonna talk about that in a minute. So one last question, can I just give the five signal? Um, but the five points that you raised in yeah. the case, where do we go from here as a collective and individual TNBC chapters? How do we assert our power as the collective, but as individual chapters, keeping in mind what you just laid out for us? Okay, thank you. Thank you. That's an excellent question. First of all, you have to make a decision of where you're going to do it. You're going to be integrationist and assimilationist mm -hmm. or independence. Uh, uh, and, and develop the means for which we can build our own separate nation, right? Are we, can we become sovereign? That's the hard question for us, right? That's a hard question for us that we have to decide. So if the unions, right, the Teamsters, if the, the Black, or the National Black Caucus, if they decide that they want to no longer live under a system of being colonized, a system that has been engaged in the process of genocide against us and continue engaged in the process of genocide, then I encourage you to go to spiritofmandela.org, one word, spiritofmandela.org, and join our efforts to build the people's center. Now, let me explain something a little more about that. <clears throat> the United States. It's a corporation. Mm -hmm. right? 28 U.S.C. 3002, Section A, 15, states the United States is a federal corporation. And what is that? It is a business. And so therefore you have pledged allegiance to a corporation. Let's understand that. Right? Now we said we've been bamboozled. We have been assimilated into a system of a corporation. Now, the United States Supreme Court, in a, in a case called uh, 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 Citizens uh, United, right? Stated corporations are what? Are people. Corporations are people. Huh? Make me some sense out of that. Okay, we can. So therefore, when the United States can do business, that ain't for us. It's not for a blood, sentient human beings. It's for corporations. They recognize their corporations. They say for the people, by the people. They ain't talking about us. They talking about other corporations. And the Supreme Court vouched that corporations are people. But when they do business, they do a business for corporations. That's why in certain instances, uh, uh, some people uh, believe that the necessity for us as individuals to incorporate ourselves, right, to become incorporated, to become sovereigns in that way, in that capacity. That's a whole different story. So I encourage you all to support the dynamics of a movement that separate ourselves from our colonial oppressors. Become an organizer and supporter of the People's Senate. We are building assemblies all across the country. Right, this is our efforts. We build assemblies across the country, and then out of those assemblies, uh, uh, elect a person to become a senator, and we will have a Congress of senators 
who's going to change the dynamic of what it means to be governed for the people, by the people, mm. real people, not corporations. That's what we're doing. All right? Spiritofmandela.org, right? Slash people center. Learn about it. I got some documentary materials that will be laid out here, uh, both on the verdict. I have enough for everyone. Both on the verdict and also on the building of the people's senate and other information that we're, that we're developing. My, my cousin here, um, um, uh, Abbas Luther King, right? He has a program called the People's Program in California. And basically, he's, he's redeveloping uh, what was the Black Panther Party's survival program. Right? We changed the name from survival to decolonization program. Because mm. right? we have to decolonize our minds. We have to decolonize our thinking. Yeah. Right? That's who we are as a people. Yeah. Right? We have to begin to look at ourselves as a nation within a nation, within an oppressed nation. Right? That's a process of decolonization. Right? That's a process of understanding who we are as a people. Right? And also, as I may mention, uh, having gone to different other countries and telling them that we, that you will not be free to live free, let me tell you to make this point explicitly clear. The world is waiting on us. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. world mm -hmm. is waiting on us. Why? Because we're in the belly of the beast. in the belly of the beast, right? So everyone who's fighting or trying to end colonization or neocolonization in the United States, this country, this corporate entity, continues to try to export or try to uh, 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 colonize and reap the profits from, reap, reap, uh, uh, exploit the resources of other nations and countries, right? And they're fighting back like Venezuela, like Nicaragua, like uh, uh, Cuba, uh, like uh, 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 um, Ghana, uh, like uh, Nigeria, like Mali, like uh, uh, Niger, right? All right? We are responsible for the freedom of the planet. Mm. Mm. Right? Because we understand this is an empire. Mm -hmm. Right? And history inform us. History informs us that empires are not, do not decline or not gotten rid of by external forces. Mm -hmm. Never have, never will. Never yeah. right? Empires are destroyed by internal mm -hmm. forces of the empire. When the people rise and say, we're done. Mm -hmm. We're done. No more. That's how empires are destroyed. Right? And the world is waiting on us. Right? Look around the world. Look around the world. I'm going to go to Australia, New Zealand, Germany, South Africa. Black people are downtrodden. Brazil. Yeah. Anywhere you look in the world, black people, African people, people from the descendants of Africa are downtrodden. And we're in the richest country in the world. Mm -hmm. And we don't have no responsibility to ourselves and to our people in the diaspora. Mm -hmm. None. Why? Colonization in your mind. How you think you determine the fact of what you do, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Think you proceeds action? So if you think like a criminal, you go act like a criminal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> is that right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think like a revolutionary. Okay. okay. Not act like a revolutionary. Yeah. I think like a liberator. Mm -hmm. Not act like a I think like a massacre. Yeah. We have to emancipate our minds, huh? What did you say? Liberate. Liberate. Not emancipate. Thank you. Thank you. I wish you correct me now. <laughs> <laughs> I still So at this time, if you don't mind, we want to open up uh, to a couple questions. Uh, to two questions. We have a mic stand over here and a mic stand over there. Hello, how are you doing? Really pleased about that. All right. I'm, I call myself an angry black man because the stuff you're talking, I think about it constantly all the time. And I see it amongst my people, man. Mm -hmm. And it's sad. It is. You know, we're killing each other. I mean, I mean, and a lot of times I see kids, I mean, babies, man. I want to hide to get these damn guns and stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. And there's something that's going on with our people 
that I can't seem to wrap my head around me. I'm here right now with all these people. I'm glad we're here to get together to fight people. But the thing about it is, what are we going to do when we leave here? Mm -hmm. That's we the question. Place right here. And then talk about things that have been going on for way back in the day, man. 1950 something. We still dealing with these same things today. Something is wrong, bro. It's terribly wrong. I don't know how to solve it, but I can see it. I'll give you an example of something that's so simple that everybody here can do right now. One simple thing. We say we're Africans, right? But when we spend our dollars, on, we spend them with the white man. On, I can open up a store in the right place to do the way the air I was at. I thought about taking my money and opening up a store. I thought about this before. But I can see my people going next to the other a or the white man. It happens every day. Like you said, we got to get in this mind right here. We all put by mind. It's crazy. Another thing, I'm going to make it real simple. We say we're Africans, but when we spend our dollars, again, we go to every European country there is and, and get them our dollars. Now, if you, anybody here ever thought about one simple thing, Take the dollars to fucking Africa. It's 54 countries over there. They say if the black man in the United States of America today, you know some, some country live on tourism in Milan. You know we took our dollars, all these millions of black people in this country, next time you go on a vacation, take it to Uganda. Take it to Kenya. Take it to Ghana. Take it to Senegal. Come on, man. Spend our dollars over there. And you lift these third world countries up a little bit. Come on, man. Some things are simple. No more European countries on your next vacation. Take it to Africa. Give them the damn money. Let them go up a little bit. That's right. It's little things like that to lift our people up. Like I say, I'm an angry black man. I was, he was talking. I ain't gonna do this you know, I ain't gonna do stuff, you know? And I can keep talking all day now. But I'm not gonna do that. But I'm gonna tell you one thing. Until we get our minds right, this we we'll be talking about the same thing this year. Next year, next year, next year, next year. Oh, I, I, no, 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 we're not. Because, but, but, but listen, look, I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying, and I understand you. But guess what, brother? Everything you said, and I respect you to the utmost. But until we get it right up here, no. they go out. Sometimes we go out here, out here. When I was a kid, let me say one more thing. When I was a kid, what's your question? I, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, let me go. Sorry. I'm sorry. I apologize. What's the question? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I apologize. I left something in my mind that I want to get off. I'm talking too much. I'm sorry. Hey, 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 hey. I brought you back. Forgive me. Hey, bro, what's, what's your name? My name is Dwayne Stevens. Dwayne, listen. Yeah. Listen, boy, I appreciate your passion. Yeah. I got a lot of passion, man. I got a lot of passion. I got a lot of passion, right? Yeah. But as I said, right, you remember, the, uh, I don't know if you remember, but there's a, uh, 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 um, uh, Funkadelic's old song, right? Oh, no. right? Hey. Partner Funkadelic's old song. They say what? <laughs> yeah. Free your mind and your, <laughs> and your ass will follow. Amen. 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 You got to see your mind. Thank you, brother. I'm sorry, man. That's all right, brother. Recognize his brother tonight. Okay. Yeah, I got a point. Right, I got you. What do you think about the Alabama slime down there in Montgomery, Alabama? We talked about this. We talked about this. That that is a chance for us to all come together. And I got one more question. Mm. I want to know what you think about that song by Jason Aldean. Try that in a small town. I'm just surprised how many young people looked at that video and didn't see the symbolism of mm -hmm. where that church where the black man was hung and then another man was killed during the rally. And I look at Facebook and I see these kids bobbing their head to the song. And, and, and let me say, it's catchy. It's catchy as hell. But if you don't see the symbolism in it, yeah. then you lost. And a lot of our young people up there that like to try to review our songs that was good in our day, I don't see nothing wrong with it. And I, I 
just can't get past that mentality. So that's what I got to say. All right, I, I, I appreciate, I appreciate the, uh, your comment and also uh, your statement. Uh, it is extremely important that we come to, to some understanding that we have a responsibility to our young people, right? Uh, that we have to get out in the community, boots on the ground, to organize yeah. them. Brother May, you mentioned the question of boots on the ground organizing. Brother May, the question of issues of guns in our community. There's a proliferation of guns in our community. Where do they come from? We didn't want to manufacture any guns. We don't. Right? Now, you want to deal with that issue? Right? For us and our young people? Organize gun clubs. Yeah. Okay. Right? Black right, folks, they got gun clubs. Right? They teach them how to hunt. Yeah. Right? They show them how to use a proper use and more kind of concept of how to use a weapon. We don't do that. Right? Now, let me say this here. If you start doing that, that's how they respond. Okay? That's what Reagan did when the Black Death Squad began to arm themselves instead of building a uh, gun club. They changed the law. Alright? So they want to get rid of guns in the community? Organize gun clubs. Mm. They gonna get the guns. Uh, one, one point of order, because we got we got a schedule we gotta adhere to. We're gonna do these last these last group, so we're gonna cut off right here. Questions. So questions. Thank you. Questions. Yeah, so right. Keisha. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It is, yes. Uh, so my question is um, just in reference to the, the black diaspora. Yes. And um, sitting on the side where as a woman of color, I want to say that, as a black woman here yeah. in the United States, without a history that is recognized, how do I speak to my sisters and brothers from countries who have been told that I am lazy, that I am worthless, and have the same beliefs as some of our oppressors and colonizers? What steps can we take, starting today, in conversation with our brothers and sisters in this room, throughout the diaspora, to say that we are one and to provide a united front as we move through this process. I appreciate that question very much so. And the reason why I appreciate it so much because in my book, I have referred back to this book again, right? I have what they call Folding Up, Front from the Liberation of African Nation, National Strategy of Folding Up, right? And he said a united front, right? We have to begin that. We have to organize that. We call it a united front, right? Amongst black people in this country. But again, we have to understand what our goals and objectives are. What are we seeking to achieve, all right? For me, it's nationhood, all right? I, I no longer want to see the empire, all right? I want to see the empire destroyed, all right? In no uncertain terms. Because it has not done any good for us as a people or any other people of color on this planet, all right? There are 740 billion dollars in the United States. There are 40 billionaires in the United States. And they control $6.9999 trillion. All the wealth of Western Europe. What? All the wealth of Western Europe is in the hands of 740 people here in the United States. All right? We have a population of 330 million people in this, in this country. All right? And we're complicit in allowing this hoarding of wealth mm -hmm. to our collective detriment. Mm. We're fighting for the crumbs off their table. Mm. All right? So we're talking about freeing the mind and your ass will follow, right? We have to have a goal and objective to achieve. My goal and objective to achieve is New Africa. Republic of New Africa. All right? Sovereignty. Nationhood. All right? So, black women who are the mothers of the universe. Okay, okay. Thank you. All right? The universe, right? Who create these children? Mm -hmm. And I'm be partial on this. My mom was raised with the understanding she's asking. She raised her children with that understanding. How are we raising our children? Right? And because we have a colonized mentality, we're providing them with something that's all that's detrimental mm -hmm. to our mental and physical well-being. 
But begins at the foot of the mother, teaching our babies. Remember, not sure there's not a, not a sprint. This is a marathon. All right? This is a marathon. And we have to prepare to pass the baton. Keep that stride going. But in order to do so, but in order to do so, we have to prepare those to take up this baton. So we have to be deliberate in our thinking, in our understanding of our struggle. And where we want to go, go from here. So you say, well, where do we go today? I already told you. Spiritofmandela.org, people sent it. Got it. Spiritofmandela.org, people sent it. Yes, go ahead. Thank you. Go ahead. Right, right here. Right. Right. That's how we're going to organize, that's how we're going to organize our future. All right, and also, we're going to build what we call forward now. Front for liberation, new after the nation. All right? We're going to develop a decolonization program. As my, 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 my dear blood uh, 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 cousin here, or the People's Program. That People's Program is developed on call across the country. He was in Louisiana uh, last, last week, was it? A uh, week before last, right? Organizing a, a uh, uh, decolonization program there. But he got organizing decolonization programs in Rochester, also in Indiana, and other parts of, of the country, right? And we developed this network under the, the name of under the name of Forward Now, Front for Liberation of the African Nation. All right? That's where we're going. That's our future. Okay? I said it, it's in the universe now. Okay? Speaking into existence. I smoke it. That's right. It's there. All right? That's what we're going to do. And I need your help. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Okay, right here. <clears throat> Thank you for speaking on Divide and Conquer. Yes. This is a strategy that they have used. Um, since indentured servitude, mm -hmm. when they separated the white um, indentured servants from the black indentured servants. Then as you cited with Malcolm and Martin, uh, more recently uh, they did the same kind of, they used the same kind of strategy between Barack and my pastor whom I grew up under, Jeremiah Wright. Oh, great Jeremiah Wright. Um, <laughs> how can we erase the mentality of divide and conquer to get to um, a more united um, front? That's my first question. And then my second question is, another form of colonization is that we have been programmed to be poor. How do we erase that mentality that says wealth is bad, rich people are bad, because that programming is also keeping us in poverty? Great, great question. Uh, <clears throat> I'm gonna take the second one uh, first, right? We live in a system that's based upon two, two particular uh, principles, right? Um, in terms of the capitalist system, capitalist imperialist system. Two principles individualism, right? And competition. There is no capitalism but in rugged individualism and competition. Okay? So, what is the opposite of that? Cooperation and unity. Hmm. We have to be a more cooperation amongst us as a people, right? And so doing, by being more cooperative with ourselves in, in, in the community, right, or as a nation of people, we build greater unity, right? And it usually has to be a, a force. It has to be a, a, a wall, right? An impenetrable wall. But anything that's not according to our goals and objectives and achieve is blocked. It's blocked. Okay. So that's the first point. Cooperation and unity. Second of all, yes, yes, we have to establish allies. Okay, the People's Senate is part of that process of building these allies, right, where we have individuals, organizations, uh, who will understand that our goal and objective is sovereignty, right, independence, nationhood, right, and they are supporting of that in the course of our of our overall struggle, right. As I uh, made mention over here, right, we have to free our mind. And I ask them to follow. Mm -hmm. okay. So first of all, we have to recognize that we have a colonized mentality. To what, a, to what degree for, to have navigated 400 years of white supremacy has traumatized us? That's right. What harm has we suffered? So we have to go in the process of decolonization. Mm -hmm. right? uh, and in so doing, we have to also choose our goals and objectives going forward. What is what are we meeting our children, our grandchildren? I'm a great grandfather, all right? Uh, I, 
Bucket for me before I went in. I told him, that's what I said, love before me before I went in. I, my, my daughter was in the womb. Mm. All right? And I spent a day with her until I got out in 2000, 2020. All right? Hmm. So she lost for me, not being there for her. So we had to be there for our children. All right? We had to host the children. Yes. Yes. Yeah. We had to host the children across this country who are in fatherless yeah. or in dysfunctional families. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right? And they want that way. We want to keep it that way. Because well, if we don't have a strong family, we don't have a strong community. And then we don't have a strong nation. All right? So that's that divide and conquer issue that you that you raise, sis. All right? But that's the beginning at home. That's the beginning in our community. That's the beginning in your heart. And understanding that this system is not for the best interest of us as a people. Never has been and never will be. All right? That's affirm that in our, that's confirm that in our understanding. And this system is based upon competition. All right? And what? Individualism. All right? And our goal in judges is build greater cooperation and unity amongst us. All right? And we build that uh, 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 within the family, build that within our communities, we build a nation. I hope Thank I, you. I hope I have some questions. Thank you. Yes, you All right, so, uh, so uh, good, good morning. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Uh, first of all, thank you for the empowering words that you gave us today. Uh, one thing I want to say, uh, you reminded me of a documentary I watched called Exterminate All Brutes. Anybody? Watch the documentary. He's speaking to everything that's in that documentary. Second, uh, my question. Um, I'm out of Castle, follow to Philadelphia Commonwealth Association School of Administrators. We're educators. Okay. Uh, most of us, principals, assistant principals, county managers, and so forth. And so one of the things we have to do, right, is enforce education. Yeah. Uh, make sure teachers are teaching, and so forth, right? My question, though, to that, because we know that in America, the education system was not created for black people. Mm -hmm. Your tongue was cut out if you knew how to articulate. Um, you were killed if you were found writing a letter right. or knew how to read. Okay. With that, how do we work within that construct of racial systemic system and education to work on decolonization? Right? Because I believe our education system imposes and or enforces a level of colonization to conform to that uh, to that, that assimilation, right, that you speak of. Yeah. And I believe that that, that, that happens. Although some of us, we're whispering to our kids on the side, like, yeah. don't believe that. But we had to, in that system, unfortunately, have a level of uh, conformity within that. So how do we, you know, how, how do we begin to, to have those conversations with those higher ups okay. that are designing the curriculums okay. and the system of things that we have to impose. Okay. Thank you for the question, brother. Uh, I, and I don't want to throw any shade on this conference, right? Uh, but uh, why are we holding it here in, in Miami? Right? <laughs> why is we held here in Miami with this guy in the temple? Right? He's opposing the critical race theory. Oppose the truth. Yes. You understand what I'm saying? Our brother said, well, we, we, we put our, our spending power, our money power, where that's why we in, 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 a, in a city or a state that supports our, our liberation and independence. Right? Uh, 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 our brother here, the, the former chair of this organization, he said, uh, he said that uh, his golden objective was for power, building towards power. If you want to like me, understand that I'm working towards power. <coughs> right? Is that what you're telling me? Yes, What's your name again? Chris Berry. You know Chris? Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know Chris. I know Chris too. I just want to bring that, bring that out. Right? For power. Yes, bro. I'm in, I'm in a conversation with a, a, a friend of ours, a Chris friend of ours, but assisted by the name of Ashaki, right? 
and uh, also a professor uh, Akinyele uh, Emoja out of uh, Atlanta, uh, Atlanta University. And we are working towards building what we call a national curriculum, right? An educational national curriculum. Well, we are fighting uh, against this, this DeSantis wants to prevent uh, 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 critical race theory, right? Because they don't want the truth to be told to their children of their what? The barbarity, yes. the savagery, yes. what they have done over the centuries. Okay? Let's, let's, let's go to the heart of the, of the situation. Right? The media was done understand. Okay? 1492, there was a papal bull for the Catholic Church. Right? Pope Nicholas the, the Sixth, I think his name was. Right? Called the Doctrine of Discovery. That's right. If you've not seen it or read about it, please look it up. A Doctrine of Discovery. All right? And what happened to Doctrine of Discovery was that he told the, the Portuguese and the Spanish to go around the world and you find people who are not adherent to their belief system that either be murdered or enslaved. Written record. This is written record. This is where it began. Right? And it evolved into this idea, this aberrant idea of white supremacy. Okay? And I say aberrant idea of white supremacy because if you look at the DSMV book, which is the diagnostic book of psychology, in that book, right, they say superiority complex is a mental disorder. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. Superiority complex is a mental disorder. It's in that book. So what is my supremacy? Mm -hmm. They're crazy. <laughs> they have minds. If they believe that they're superior to any other people on this planet, that's a mental illness. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You see, I see. I saw you. Yeah, that light turned on right there. I saw that, bro. It's <laughs> illness. This is what we are up against. A system of people who are insane. Yeah. So yeah, we have to develop, we have to develop our own national curriculum of education. That's right. Yeah. That's liberatory. Mm -hmm. That frees our minds. That builds towards nationhood and understand who we are as a people. All right? So that's what we're working on. We, again, come to the spirit of Mandela, right? right? See what we're working on, we're doing. Join us, support us, strengthen us. It can only lead to our freedom. That's the only direction we have to go. There is no other direction for us. That's the direction of independence. There is no other direction. And again, the world is waiting on us. Because when we free ourselves, we free the world. A white supremacy, yeah. right? And capitalist exploitation of people's resources and human value and labor. All right? You an educator? I need your information. All right? We're going to work building this national curriculum. Yeah, my, my, my whole local <laughs> principles. How about that? How about that? How about that? How about that? How about Okay, I'm not serious. That's what I'm talking about. All right, so we have our last question, Ms. Brown. Right, so leading into my question, yes. I was told to relate it. Um, the reason why it's here in Miami is because TNBC started here, and they were meant to do their fifth year. Excuse me, I didn't hear that very well. Yeah, leading, leading into my question, yes. um, I was told to relay a message that TNBC was started in Miami, and they yeah. want to reclaim their legacy and show them they're not going to get run out of here. They were supposed to do a 50th here in 2020, but the pandemic happened. Okay. So that's just the answer to that part. I, hey, listen. We, we, we really came to fight, really. <laughs> right. Listen. Right. All part of the people. <laughs> <laughs> that part of the black people. <laughs> that part of the black people. And that note, I want to say we have a rare opportunity here. It's not often that you get to be in a room with an organized body of black people nationwide. Yeah. So I want to note it. Um, being that this is an organized body of African people nationwide across the country, yeah. what kind of power does TMBC have? Like, what can TMBC do as this organized body to help bring to fruition a lot of the things that you're talking about, self-determination, 
decolonization, all these things. What are some ways that um, TNBC could actually help things like further the people's program is going on in Oakland? Right. And, and create programming in different um, states across this country, different black communities across this country. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thanks for that question. It's an excellent question. Right. <laughs> um, uh, I'm going back to my cousin again. Right. He's also a podcaster. Okay. Right. He has a podcast called Hella Black. Hella Black Podcast. Okay. Oh, you know about you know about Hella Black. <laughs> okay. All right. So you know you know uh, Abbas. All right. Very good. All right. Uh, we have to begin to. Um, uh, to support our podcast, right? Like uh, 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 Hello Black, like BM, uh, BMP, uh, Black Black Power uh, Media, and, and other sources like that, right? Uh, critical race theory, right? Ensure that the ideas and discussion of critical race theory goes on across this country, right? But we want the truth. We have to be truth tellers, right? We can no longer hide under the hypocrisy of democracy. The hypocrisy of democracy. Right? So we have to be truth tellers. So critical race theory is extremely important. Raise our ideals up so that we can understand our true history of resistance in this country. Alright? Everything from Armistad to uh, the, the great Reverend Nat Turner to our heroine uh, uh, um, uh, 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 Harriet Tubman. Right? To Asada Shakur who's in exile. All right, and now for next, all right, Martin Luther King Jr., all right? We have to raise our leaders up. We have to raise our resistors up. So people, are, so our people understand the legacy of resistance that we've had in this country. They don't teach that in our schools, in their schools, that we are uh, substitute. Okay. Because it's their school. Because it's their schools, exactly right. Their schools that we're subject to, okay? So we have to begin following decolonization programs, right? <coughs> Housing, education, uh, health care, right? Things that we're sorely neglecting in our community. Build those kinds of institutions in our community. Empower us yes. with our unity and our determination, right? And our inspiration and aspiration to be liberated, to be abolitionists. Become an abolitionist. Abolish anything and everything that dehumanizes, demeans, and degrades the value of black people in this country. Abolish it. Fight against it. And raise up our leaders. Right? Raise up our leaders. Our real leaders. Not the assimilationists. Not the integrationists. Not the go along to get along. Right? But our Chris. Right? And, and, and our professors, right, who understand that history and understand the dynamic. Raise up the National Black Caucus. Go to all the unions. So this is who we are. We are liberators. Right? Do that. And this is how we begin to move forward and begin to have greater discussions of unity across the country. I'm glad you get that explanation, brother, why y'all come to, to Miami. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah, thank you. I appreciate that, man. All right, let me know even more, <laughs> have more love for you all. Right? I'll come back and fight. What? Okay. Come on, man. You got to out and talk. Brother <laughs> so, so, Janelle, on mm -hmm. behalf of the Teachers National Black Caucus, I want to say thank you for coming to us. Let's give a round of applause. Open up your fucking mind.